didn't continue. So we're trying to, to resume with this workshop. Um, we are not the same organizers of, of this workshop. It's, it's, a, it's a new team. And we are trying to, to retake this because this is a line of research that we are starting to work on in, in, in our institutions. Uh, as, a, as an opening topic for this workshop, and hoping that it will encourage researchers to participate in future editions, we would like to give this very brief presentation of uh, an ongoing project that we have in, in our institution and in, in our research group. Uh, this is, we will see here um, preliminary results, but we want to give like a broader description of what um, intelligent transport systems are. So the title is Mobility Studies in Villavicencio, Situation and Prospects Toward a Smart Mobility. Um, in general terms, the, the problem that we are trying to address here is uh, a problem that we face every day. It's a global problem, which is traffic. We see it every day, especially if we live in big cities. Uh, we never enjoy it, we always try to avoid it, but we have to face it nonetheless, eventually at some point. Um, probably you are familiar with the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, I would like to share with you that several of the goals or, 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 or the ma main milestones considering the goals, in these goals um, consist of the reduction of, of traffic and and the improvement of road safety or safety on, on the roads as, as we use the transportation networks. Um, this, time, this type of research tries to uh, address this problem by, by completing these goals. Um, the motivation for this is the smart cities paradigm which aims to use a variety of technologies uh, information technologies that we have available nowadays to enhance transportation systems and make better informed decisions when using transportation networks. We are here plan to take advantage of uh, Internet of Things and, and, and the technologies that we have to our disposal uh, nowadays. One of the purposes of, or one of the ingredients of the smart cities paradigms is the construction of urban traffic observatories, which are essentially enterprises comprising the, the combined effort of different actors, institutions, and technologies to provide and use uh, traffic data to improve the use of transportation networks in order to to increase safety and the quality of life of people as they use the road networks. And finally, what we, the, one of the, of the main components of this paradigm and of uh, urban traffic transportation systems is intelligent transportation systems, which, which consists of software applications that are used to in integrate the information of traffic, accidents, and all the events that take place in the, on the roads in order to make predictions about such incidents so that these can be avoided and preventive measures can be taken so that, uh, so that people can, can be safer on the roads. Usually these systems use, uh, well, take advantage of historic data in terms of traffic, accidents, and use that, those data in order to create models that predict the, the future behavior of the system. M there are two main types of models, uh, macro macroscopic models and microscopic models. In, macro in microscopic modeling, we consider uh, each of the actors on the road as individual unit units and we contemplate their behaviors and individually, whereas in macros macroscopic modeling, we, we contemplate only the aggregate behavior of the whole system as a whole. 
there are two, two, two particular cases that we are starting to consider in, in our research. One is in Bogota, Colombia, which, as you probably know, is the capital in Bogota, the cap is the capital of Colombia. It has a population of over seven million people. Uh, the last estimate, estimated number of vehicles is over two, two million. And it has uh, uh, a vehicle fleet which exhibits uh, an annual growth of over 24% for private cars, 60% for trucks, and 23% for motorcycles. There's a uh, a middle-sized city in the center of Colombia called Villavicencio is, is the capital of one of the, of, of, of the local subdivisions of the country. It has a considerable smaller population, over 500,000, uh, over 100,000 vehicles, but it also presents uh, uh, a growing number of vehicles annually. So this represents an increase in traffic and, and traffic-related related incidents that we wish to, to address and prevent. The project that we are working on is the development of an urban observatory for both cities. Um, the main goal is to develop an urban traffic observatory for Bogota, which is the larger city, but we are starting with a smaller pilot in Villavicencio. Uh, taking advantage of the fact that it's, uh, it's, it's a smaller volume of pedestrians and vehicles, and also the, the urban area of the city is considerably smaller. This contemplates the involvement of local governments uh, and academic institutions, and the project is still in preliminary stages. It contemplates the participation of several institutions, including uh, the organizers of this, of this conference, conference, which is Universidad Distrital, Francisco Jose de Caldas, from which our colleague Hector comes. Um, one of the specific places within the city of Villavicencio that are under study is a roundabout called La Grama. Um, this place was chosen because it's a special focus of traffic within the city. Um, and this helps us evidence one problem that is common in this type of research, which is related to the collection of data. Um, in fairly recent times, uh, the collection of data has become more automated by using drones, sensors, cameras, but in some, in some, urban, re some, some urban areas, especially in remote areas within a city or, or within a country, uh, using this type of technology can be more difficult because it's not always available. So still manual means are used when collecting this data. So this is one of the methods that we are uh, using in order to estimate and characterize traffic in the city and particularly in this, in this particular point of the city. Is measuring um, experimentally the journey times uh, that take uh, by going from one, from one point to another and traversing uh, uh, this roundabout. So some experimental measures have been taken in several of the roads that go through this point and these have been characterized by, by the type of vehicle and the, uh, and, and the, type, of day, and the, and the time of day. Uh, two particular times uh, or, or, or yeah, two particular times of the, of the day have been considered of peak hours and peak hours, and, and the times have been discriminated by, by types of vehicles. So by these means, there has been a characterization that we have achieved a, in a preliminary form, showing how, how the times vary a, in terms of the peak and of peak hours, and how these vary in terms of three main types or groups or categories of vehicles that we want to contemplate, which are public transportation, uh, mainly uh, consisting of buses, which are the ones that are used in the city, taxis, uh, which, which circulate in large volumes in the city, and private cars, with which comprise a, a large proportion of, of uh, of the fleet in the city. We see here that uh, 
They're, these are not homogeneous, but the, these parallel neural cells help us uh, provide a, a short characterization of the city or a preliminary ca characterization of the, of the city. And, and with this information, we will eventually pr uh, produce uh, models for the prediction of, of traffic and, and eventually the prediction of, of accidents and, and, and incidents. Uh, as, as I was saying, this is preliminary work. This is a project that has just started in, a, uh, in the second semester of this year. Uh, what we're planning to do is uh, aggregate data, uh, traffic and accident related data in order to construct preliminary models that help us understand the, the, the phenomenon, of, phenomenon of traffic discriminated by top, types of vehicles. And, and eventually understand how, which are the main contributing factors for accidents within the city. And this is essentially the, the, the introduction to this, to this workshop. What we we're planning to do is promote uh, this line of research and hope, hopefully receive more input and more uh, submissions for future editions of this workshop. Uh, that are aligned with this type of research. Um, hopefully uh, expanding on, on this type of work and using these concepts uh, which are all uh, aligned in, in, in on the paradigm of, of the smart cities for the improvement of, of, well, our quality of life in these urban areas. So this is it, so thank you very much. I don't know if anyone has any comments or questions or we can proceed to. Yeah, that's one of the problems that we have found. In, in a big city like Bogota, there, there's a, uh, a fairly good infrastructure for collecting data. We have sensors, cameras, um, drones. But in smaller cities like Villavicencio, which is the one we are starting with, uh, that type of infrastructure is not always available. So in those cases, we, we still need to use manual means, which of course, uh, well, introduces additional problems because manual means mean, mean human error and, and it, it involves a logistic that, that is not always comfortable. <laughs> To, to assume, but fortunately, uh, our colleagues in that city, in Villavicencio, have uh, a fairly good group of students and our researchers who are, who are uh, willing to, to help us taking these samples, even if it's manually. So that's what we're doing. Thank you. So without further ado. So now that we're going to continue with the other workshops, I would like to ask uh, the audience, especially the audience on Zoom, if we have the authors of the paper, Knowledge, Representation, and Technologies in the Latin American Academic Literature. Good afternoon. Hi. Oh, Luciano, yeah. So Hi, Luciano. You're very welcome to Share your screen and Thanks. the stage is yours. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm. It's okay now? Yes. You, we can see. We can see you and hear you, so you're welcome to go ahead. Yes. The decoder and the oh yes. Can you see the presentation? Yes. We can see you, yes. Okay. I can start? Yes. You are welcome to start. Go ahead. Yes. 
Well, um, my name is Luciano Stracha. I'm a member of a group of studios in Mitología and Ingeniería Software of the Universidad Tecnológica Nacional from Buenos Aires. Uh, our Excuse me, Luciano. Uh, yes. Can you minimize that small uh, window or you are showing because it's blocking part of your presentation? Okay. Okay, that's not the result that we wanted. <laughs> It's from the presentation, yes? It's okay? No? Can you see? Luciano, but so Uh, Dejo de compartir. Okay. I think the problem is here, but we just okay. to minimize a window. That's it. <laughs> okay. I I didn't share. Okay. Now, now we can see you better. So please go ahead. Oops. Do you see my presentation? Yes. It's okay. We can see you. Okay, okay. I can. Can I start? Yeah, you, you can start. Yes. Okay, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> well, uh, my name is Luciana Estrella. Um, I'm a member of a group of the studios in metodologías de ingeniería de software. Um, it's paper is part of a knowledge um, knowledge management and information technology workshop. Um, this uh, group is part of the Universidad Tecnológica Nacional uh, from Buenos Aires. Our line of research is knowledge management, and this paper is about the knowledge representation and technology in the in the American academic literature. The scholar is, um, I will speak about the knowledge management, especially about knowledge representation and technology, and, pres and present the scoping study and his results. What is knowledge management? First, what is knowledge? Knowledge is a term incorporated in the ACOF hierarchy. Uh, the four level for this hierarchy are data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. First, the information um, for the new uh, information is a function with the input data that give meaning to this data and return information. Then if you have data and this data is uh, in a context and you can do meaning, this is information. But what is knowledge? Well, knowledge is the information plus a context plus insight. The term insight is very important for the knowledge. Uh, in general, the term insight represents the tacit implication, but it's possible to, to think about uh, shootments, experience, and the other way of the tacit uh, implication, the tacit uh, knowledge of the, or tacit way of knowledge circulation. For Diaz and Michan, the knowledge is the mixture of cognitive and contextualism. 
beliefs, purposes, should man, methodologies, information, experience, expectation about an option. It's important um, the term cognitive, um, the, which is adapted and empowered by the people mind. The people mind is very important for the knowledge. Um, but also um, in, in the information, um, we can think about the documentation, um, uh, all information that you can uh, um, exterior, 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 do a exteriorization in a, in a technology, in a document, but the, the tacit information is in the, is in the plural mind issue. Then it's very important the people, it's very important the experience, it's very important the personal perspective. Uh, the knowledge provides the basis for generate a critical view of the environment, that is the environment can be understood and interpreted through the knowledge. For a uh, we, the knowledge management, the, we is a very important author of knowledge management. The knowledge management is a, a multidiscipline. It's a pro, the knowledge man, what is a knowledge management? If, excuse me, if the knowledge is very important for the companies and the, for the society, then it's necessary manager this knowledge. What is a knowledge management then? Knowledge man management is a process through of the which the, for the organization can discover, use, and maintain the knowledge for aligning it to the business strategies and to obtain competitive advantage. For Perez and Urbais, it's a discipline that exploits the knowledge generated to achieve the organizational objective and optimize the process of the decision making. It's very important that the knowledge in the um, personal mind, in the people, that uh, to align with the organization. This knowledge, the knowledge is very important to transfer to the organization and other um, members of this organization. But the analysis of the knowledge management require several views, several considerations. A, and a view is a term used in, in several um, in several views in several disciplines of general in the software engineering. A view describes the concepts, elements, and characteristics of an interactive knowledge management system of um, any system in general from the perspective of a set of related concepts. Then the question is, what are the views for knowledge management? There are five views. It's possible to think other views too, but um, we found five views. The people's, his roles, his responsibilities, the organizational aspects, in general, organizational cult um, culture, uh, leadership, motivation, and other aspects. The process and activities is um, what are the, the activities, what are the tasks, what is the methodology that you can apply for knowledge management. The fourth view is measurement. And um, the last view is technologies and knowledge representation. Our scope is this view. The focus of this work is technologies and knowledge representation. Then our scoping study, the method for scoping study in general, there are five tasks, identify the research question, identify relevant studies, do the study selection, chart the data, collate, summary, and report the results. What are our research questions? How many people are associated with knowledge representation and technologies? Which technologies are presented in this, in this paper? And what category of technology is possibly identified in this paper? We use an open coding method. This is the search criteria for uh, publications in Spanish, 
in English and in Portuguese, and doesn't include the aspect of technological and representation view, are excluded. With this criteria and the execution of um, a scaping study, we found a 107 papers, and the reading of the, of the word of this paper, of the word, um, found allows the, allows the identification of those that consider aspects of the technological and representational view. Only this paper, there are um, 61 papers that consider this view. Our uh, scope of analysis is, are these papers. For each paper form, the technology representation element are researched and incorporated into a list, and each element is incorporated in some category. Um, our opinion is that the more important contribution for this paper is um, generate these categories through the open coding technique. Um, we have um, a, a list of technology and representation elements, and we propose these categories. Um, for our team, there are six categories with this method. is the socialization techniques, techniques or model for knowledge explanation and representation, fields of study, logical and analytical process, organizational practice, and technological tools. Um, rapid um, a table for this uh, for this category for each category the socialization techniques are those that allow the change of experience and the transpracticization of taxi knowledge in general is um, a technical uh, is technical is a method for transfer knowledge um, it's aligned with the NACA proposed um, there are a list of elements of the practices that you can apply for socialization in an organization. The elements more found in the paper, they are a community of practice, college knowledge, discussion groups. It's very important the difference and that the um, more quantity is community of practice. Then the proposed is generate community of practice in the organization. For techniques or model for knowledge explanation and representation, the author in general proposed knowledge map, organizational memory, yellow page, best practice. The idea of this um, study is found this element and in the future we can propose a um, more specific aspect about each element the possibility of what is the methodology for applied knowledge map, or what is the measure about knowledge map, and other aspects about each element of these techniques. In the case of the category of a philosophy study, um, this is very different because the philosophy study refers to a branch of knowledge or a set of branch of knowledge with inter interdisciplinary action. Each field encompasses a set of process technology in the future and necessary um, to do a an, an detailed analysis for each element. It's not um, the big data, for example, the famous intelligence. What is the possibility of um, found element about big data for knowledge management is more um, more difficult than um, only uh, techniques. In this case, is necessary at the future and more analysis for for each uh, fields of study is uh, the possibility of integrate with other groups and um, the, the research groups for. Um, respond about a um, relation between this philosophy study and the knowledge management. They are a um, logical and analytical process, correspond to data and information processing and training activities, uh, data mining, workflows, text mining, 
um, as in the other uh, categories, the question or the, the future possibilities um, response about what uh, are the possibilities that data mining uh, can uh, apply to, um, to knowledge management and the organization. Some organizational practices in general associated with the education, with the learning, virtual learning, corporate education, uh, virtual reality and simulation, and other technological tools um, with some categories, type of systems, repositories and storage media, bidirectional and communication tools, content presentation tools, and others. Um, then the, the result of this work allow ordering the different technology and knowledge representation, categorizing them, and help to the construction of a technological architecture of an integral knowledge management system. Um, our, uh, uh, our team, uh, our uh, line, research line propose um, a technical, in the future, uh, we'll propose a technological architecture then it's very important to identify what are the elements that you can we can use in this technological architecture. Then this is the, the first step for this possibility. This is the first step and we identify the elements, some categories, and in the future we will propose uh, all Or, um, um, other technology in, in each category, and we'll propose an, a technological architecture with, because um, our, our idea is that the organization can um, clear a guide for integrate knowledge management system to the process of the organization. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Luciano. Thanks to Luciano and his team for sharing his research, the research. Um, I would like the, to ask the audience here in the auditorium or in the chat if anyone has any question. Oh, there's a, here's a question, one second. Hi, good afternoon, Luciano. I'm Florencia. <laughs> I work with you. I have no questions uh, because if I have a question, I answer you in, in the correct moment. But I want uh, if you can explain what are we thinking about the proposal, the possible proposal that we talk and you explain something. Perhaps you can explain a little bit for um, the for the future, what is the proposal of um, a future proposal? Yes. 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 Well, uh, um, our proposal is um, to construct our model uh, for that the for that the organization can apply knowledge management not only um, like a, a, an idea, but also with um, concrete technology con with, um, that the organization um, know uh, what, what are the, technolog the technological elements that the need for apply knowledge management. Okay, uh, I also have a question. In the description that you provided for knowledge management, which is very interesting, I saw some resemblances to what we could consider the definition of business intelligence. Uh, could you please elaborate uh, about the similarities and differences between the two concepts? Thank you. Yes, really, um we don't we, we don't know what is the possibility for the business intelligence in the knowledge management um, 
this is a, a line that you can ex explain in the future. Um, our, our idea is the, the next work is about um, each possibility that each fields of study can, can um, uh, use in the knowledge management. What is the, the next question, the next question are, what is really the relation between the business intelligence and data mining and other um, fields of study with the knowledge man management? Okay, cool. Thank you very much. So yes. I think we don't have any more questions. So thanks again to Luciano and his team. Thanks so much. And we will proceed with the rest of the workshop. The next presentation is titled The Seki, Seki? The Seki Knowledge Creation Model, A Look Through Sociology. So this is a presentation by Patricia Guerrero, which I believe is not here with us, nor in person, nor in the chat, but uh, she has left uh, her presentation in the form of a video, which I'm going to share now. So one second, uh, where is it? So I'm going to hit play. Please let me know if you can't hear or see. Patricia, this research was carried out within the master's program in information systems engineering. I will be exposing during the next few minutes the progress of my research entitled the SECI model of knowledge creation, a look through sociology. This is the program. First, I will identify the goals and objectives of the work. Then. I will be talking about some conclusions of the previous investigation. In this sense, I will describe some elements of SECI model relevant to project management. Next, I will present the toolbox that sociology offers to describe the social space during action. After, I will expose some concepts that allow to build cognitive profiles and tools to put them on the surface. And, I will describe the elements of a new CO creation model. Finally, I will present the conclusions and some future lines of research. The objective of this presentation is to describe the elements and relationships that make up the field of project management in the exercise of practice and decision making. From a sociological look at the SECI model, it is intended to formalize the necessary elements for the creation of knowledge through the use of prior knowledge, identifying the problem, the context, the solution, and the result in terms of success and failure, but also describing the characteristics of the people in the social space. The registration of these data provides a more complete understanding of the lessons learned, making it possible to infer the probabilities of success of the new team and make decisions and actions to change the result if it is not the expected one. The main goal is to be able to present a model of CO creation of knowledge for the software development projects management. Let's see some conclusions that emerge in the previous research on success and failure in software development projects. Project management is a social construction motivated by the need to carry out specific actions to achieve immediate goals, its big challenge being knowledge conservation. The instability and unpredictability of changes in the system make ineffective the traditional approach of planning, execution and control. It is necessary to integrate the subjective aspects of lived experiences into the analysis of complexity, making an imperfect management model. Through the modeling, experimentation and learning sequence, knowledge can be built in an organic way. The information is incomplete and ambiguous and there is a lack of time to gather knowledge which makes it difficult to decide whether a project is in crisis. The lessons learned in terms of cause and effect are not enough to address the problem from the viewpoint of the objective and institutionalized word. It is important to see the social world as meaningful. Decision, action, and cognition are the key elements to create knowledge when solving a problem during praxis. 
In order to have a true understanding of the problem to be solved, it is important to identify the mental representations, recognize their power, face them directly and build new ones that also become solid and lasting. Exposing mental models and making them increasingly explicit allows us to understand the world, to be able to explain it and make sense of it. Project management and knowledge creation are systems that must evolve together and integrate. The creation of knowledge moves through four SECI conversion modes promoting the evolution of social practices and the necessary conditions of stability. Knowledge is created through the dynamic interaction between individuals and the environment. By defining a problem and experimenting with new solutions, the limits of the old knowledge are transcended and a new vision of the world is acquired. The model proposes four conversion phases. Socialization allows the sharing of tacit knowledge through observation, imitation, practice, and participation in a community. Externalization occurs through dialogue and reflection. Combination is where the integration of concepts and knowledge occurs. Internalization consists of the incorporation of knowledge. A project manager must take into account the view that the past makes sense only as a projection of the future. He must consider the objectives as drivers of dialogue and practices. Insist on dialogue to create a flow of ideas based on the empathy, reciprocity, participation, and openness that allows going further. Promise shared and systematized practices, leadership to promote culture to create knowledge in a continuous and dynamic way. Propose economic or symbolic incentives such as self-satisfaction of being able to create, peer recognition and sense of belonging to sustain motivation. The project manager has the difficult task of creating the social context BA. Ortier's toolbox allows to describe the social space. He proposes to integrate the subjective sense of the agent with the objective distributions of their practices. The social world is something that the agents have to build individually and collectively. The field is centered on the objective, structured according to the position occupied by people influenced by the specific capital they possess. The field predetermines and structures the social space leaving room for improvisation. The greater the capital, the more benefits, more influence, and more power. Such distribution may vary over time. Capital is social energy which can be disputed and accumulated. The habitus is permanent dispositions, is the product of a learning incorporation work. Together with the field, the habitus forms a system of relationships. They are continually changing due to new experiences. The habitus are socialized subjectivity. They are originates individual and collective practices, the tacit rules that are registered in the organism as perception, thought and action. Strategies constitute practices aimed at obtaining some type of capital, thus shaping the observed behavior of agents in the various fields. To understand the practices, it is necessary to construct things that are the truth of the practice but that the practice does not have as truth. Social reality exists in two poles, in things and in minds, in fields and in habitus, outside and inside agents. The behaviors produced by the habitus depend on the functioning of the field, making it possible for the field not to vary, a reproduction situation, for the field to vary but not the practice, is a situation of hysteresis, or for both the habitus and the practice to vary, producing new practices of innovation. The sociological explanation must be made considering the relationships between capital, habitus, and field that generate social practices and interpretation by reading the action in the different social positions of the actors and not so much in terms of the explicit meaning that they give to their own behavior. Communicative action under the aspect of socialization, it serves training of personal identities, giving rise to the structural following components, culture, supply of interpretations to understand something in the world, society, legitimate ordinances of regulation the belonging to groups and personality, competencies that make the subject capable of language and action. 
It is important to learn from social reality as a situated historical construction of individual and collective actors, keeping in mind the concept of a constructed world, which can be reproduced, but has the capacity for transformation. Bourdieu's theory brings conflict, power, and inequality in the exercise of practice to the surface. Habermas provides, through communicative action, the consensus and harmony necessary for collective development through self-knowledge for cognitive, effective, and practical transformation. There are intelligences that make up the profile of a person, and the combination of these is what gives them unique abilities. There is strong evidence that each intelligence possesses neural coherence, a unique neural system. Multiple intelligences are cognitive abilities defining the learning style that can be assessed to help people develop thinking strategy. Comprehension is a process of mental representation underlying the assimilation and transformation of knowledge. It is important to know the different minds. Thought is invisible and remains hidden within the mind, but when it becomes visible it offers the opportunity from which to build and learn. Thought visualization refers to any type of observable representation that documents and supports the development of an individual or groups developing ideas, questions, reasons, and reflections. Understanding is the result of application, analysis, evaluation, and creation. To create knowledge, it is necessary to collect associated activities and thoughts using methods and tools. The process can be tackled with thinking routines. It consists of patterns that can be used repeatedly helping to internalize the message about what learning is and how it occurs, laying the foundations of teamwork. Team management requires a careful understanding of complex human interaction. The knowledge stored in a database, as lessons learned, is incomplete when it comes to being represented as similar cases. It is important to characterize the subjective and objective elements of the social space in the development of the practice. The project must be seen as a system and a conversation at the same time. It is important to identify the asset with its context, with people who were part of the CO creation, the habitus, the motivations, the position they occupy in the field, the capital they hold, with their mental models and their way of learning. The social space BA is made up of people who meet to solve a problem. Under the sequence proposed by the SECI model and some thought routines interact to find the solution. This CO construction of the solution, with the context, the people who build it, their profiles and the practices used are part of the knowledge base. Faced with a new problem and a new conformation of the social space, with new people who have their own profiles, it is possible to infer on the basis of knowledge the probabilities of success, the best practices to find the solution or the profiles necessary to resolve certain conflicts before that the project enters into crisis. That solution, with profiles, practices and record in terms of success and failure will also form part of the knowledge base. The agents that make up the social field BA play a role. The role can be manager, developer, client, or deployer. They have a sociological profile. The sociological profile is objectively structured by capital. Capital can be cultural, economic, social, and symbolic and allows agents to play cards better. It is the material of exchange in the BA social field. The team dedicated to solving a problem in software development projects forms the social space and structures objectively around its capital and subjectively around the habitus. The team dedicated to solving a problem in software development projects uses different routines that make thought visible to CO create and learn. CO creations produce assets. The assets are classified in terms of success and failure. They are the problems, their solutions, and the characteristics of the people who CO create and implement them. And produce recordings. The recordings are reviewed by experts. This material allows us to visualize how the position of the agents in the field changes, 
identifying capital, but also how the cognitive structure composed of multiple intelligences changes, modifying habitus, and consequently the cognitive and social profile. Project management is a social construction and as such must be analyzed with the tools provided by sociology in order to build successful software development projects. This construction requires an imperfect model that allows modeling, experimenting, and learning in conditions of ambiguity and uncertainty. For this, tacit and explicit knowledge must be managed, CO creating knowledge that allows modifying the conditions of the social field BA to achieve success. The description of the problem may be objectively in the past, but the solution is subjectively CO created in the present, making it necessary to modify practices and habitus to innovate because otherwise the same practices will be used and the same errors reproduced year after year. As future lines of research, it is proposed to describe the different stages of the process, the architecture, and the knowledge representation models to validate them through expert judgment in the environment of technological developments. Thank you for your attention. Okay, many thanks to Patricia. Uh, in the distance, but we will not have uh, uh, we will not have questions because uh, we don't we don't have her here. So we will just continue. Just to confirm, I would like to ask the audience if the authors of the paper titled Construction of a Domain Meta Model Using EMA for Semi-Automatic Generation of Web Applications is present, either remotely or in the auditorium. Okay, uh, this presentation is also available in a video, but since there doesn't seem to be uh, any of the authors present, we will not have questions for this title either. So let's just continue. Let's see, here it is. analysis of the use of MDE for semi-automatic generation of web. Okay, just before we begin, this is a presentation by Lady Viviana Caray Gonzalez. It's titled Construction of a Domain Meta Model Using EMA for Semi-Automatic Generation of Web Applications. Web Applications. The construction use of M web Hello. My name is Lady Bibiana. I'm from Colombia. The article is titled Construction of a Domain Meta Model Using EMF for Semi-Automatic Generation of Web Applications. This article presents a preliminary analysis of the use of MDE for semi-automatic generation of web applications. The construction of web applications is one of the most explored working tools in software development so it requires new or existing methodologies that allow software development to continue to evolve, providing the possibility to continue building web applications. This article presents a preliminary analysis of the use of MDE for semi-automatic generation of web applications based on the process of building a domain metamodel, that is, the basis of all the artifacts that are present in an application from the context to be developed, which forces to acquire a certain level of abstraction to achieve the generation of the domain meta model for the context of web applications. In MDE, the transformation chains are those that allow the models can be transformed to obtain the final product. The initial proposal is the creation of a context meta model that includes concepts related to the specific domain entities to be resolved, 
which would abstract the different elements that can have a solution for the domain. The purpose of this paper is to carry out the analysis as a starting point for constructing a meta model in a domain specific language using model driven engineering, MDE, and implementation in Eclipse Modeling Framework, EMF. For the proposed case study, three academic enrollment web applications are considered that maintain the same business logic for different organizations. The solution of the case is to create a domain meta model that allows generating the three tools each with its particular characteristics. Model-driven engineering is a proposal that has been worked on for several years. The use of models as a fundamental axis throughout the life cycle of a software project reduces development time and effort. The purpose of this work is to build a prototype and eclipse the source code base of web applications by creating a meta model for the representation of a specific domain model. The models are considered important because they allow different levels of abstraction to be represented, particularly for the emphasis of software engineering. Transformation chains are important as a strategy for software development projects. Chains allow models to be transformed until the desired product is obtained. Transformation chains, that is, models are generated from the most abstract to the most concrete through transformation steps and refinements until reaching the final code by applying the last transformation. In general, it can be said that a transformation definition consists of a collection of rules, which are specifications of the ways in which a model, or part of it, can be used to create another model, or part of it. Refinement, it is a semantically correct transformation that captures the essential relationship between the specification, the abstract model, and the implementation, the code. Refinement is usually verified by showing that the concrete system simulates the abstract system. A better alternative is to build meta-models that allow the abstraction of the general characteristics of a particular context to carry out transformation processes. It would be enough to make a design for a new metamodel based on the context, which would apply different transformations necessary to provide results in the source code. The figure presents the representation by means of a conceptual map with the context of the related components in the whole software development cycle. In the concept, the map is highlighted in blue with the components directly related to the path that must be taken into account using model transformation chains to reach the final result that is the basis of the source code of a web page. In software engineering, web applications are those tools that users can use by accessing a web server through the internet or an internet through a browser. In other words, it is a software application that is coded in a language supported by web browsers that the browser is trusted to execute. A better alternative is to build metamodels that allow the abstraction of the general characteristics of a particular context to carry out transformation processes. It would be enough to make a design for a new metamodel based on the context, which would apply different transformations necessary to provide results in the source code. A web application is provided by a web server and used by users connecting from anywhere via web clients, browsers. The architecture of a website has three main components. A web server. A network connection. One or more clients. The web server distributes pages of formatted information to clients that request them. Their requests are made through a network connection, and for this, the HTTP protocol is used. Once this request is requested through the HTTP protocol and received by the web server, it locates the web page in its file system and sends it back to the browser that requested it. The solution of the case is to create a domain meta model that allows generating the three tools, each one with its particular characteristics and with different styles allowing to create the source code base for the development of the web page, creating components such as user, login, student, course, subjects, notes in the generation of each page corresponding to the objects required by each work team. For example, consider that three academic registration web applications are generated that retain the same business logic as a base, however, 
one is billed to be used in a public university, the second in a private university, and the last in secondary schools. For its development, each work team will have to build an application that satisfies the acceptance criteria of its respective requirement, allowing the student registration process. The three cases must generate the necessary code to manage the base objectives that are the same for all cases and subsequently customized to solve the specific requirements of the development, which means that the code generation is being carried out three times for the same purposes where it was possible to use a single development and invest effort focusing on the particularity of each case, further minimizing the total time of software construction. For the development of the transformation chain software-based, the process begins with the creation of a domain metamodel MDE. The initial proposal is the creation of a domain metamodel that includes concepts related to the specific domain entities to be resolved, which would abstract the different elements that can have a solution for the domain. This paper presents the process of building a domain metamodel that is the basis of the context to be developed in the final project, which is the semi-automatic generation of web applications. For the domain model, the construction of the metamodel defines the abstract syntax of the language that is developed, that is, the basis of all the artifacts that are present in an application. Using eCore as a foundational meta model allows a modeler to take advantage of the entire EMF ecosystem and tools, to the extent that it is reasonably easy to map application level models back to eCore. This does not mean that it is good practice for applications to take advantage of eCore directly as their meta model, but they could consider defining their own meta models based on eCore. The figure represents the meta model created using the Eclipse modeling tool, in which we perform the following tasks, the creation of an EMF modeling project and Java code generation, for the meta model editor. This meta model contains the following class information. Class object. Class class. Class web. App. Class function. Class variable. Type. A class allows defining concepts in the meta model. A reference allows defining association between concepts. E attribute allows defining properties of the concepts. Data type defines a type for an attribute such as a string, int, e double. The entities are generated from the eCore model. This process is iterative, that is, if elements of the model are changed, added, or removed one can regenerate the entities again. To generate the entities, the generator model must first be created. This model allows setting various properties before generating the Java code that allows manipulating the entities and creating a simple editor for the model. Also, can be indicated that the generated code is created as an Eclipse plugin project with a series of folders and Java packages. In recent years, the methodologies and strategies with which the possibility of building applications with particular characteristics have evolved. Some of the most relevant ideas that can be included and have an impact on the development of content and applications running on the Internet are Use of special glasses in which a layer of virtual reality would be superimposed on physical reality. We will be able to dialogue naturally and online with an intelligent virtual agent. Through it, banking or electronic commerce operations can be carried out. An Internet that, together with tactile devices, will offer a complete sensory reality and allow almost real virtual experiences thanks to 3D. The Internet will be integrated into the vehicles. Internet in which there will be neural implants with direct access to the Internet that will improve higher brain functions such as memory, learning speed and intelligence in general. Model-driven engineering provides the possibility of using model transformations that allow any reality to be represented and displayed as desired in a final product, regardless of the existing technological advances. Model-driven engineering will be able to represent implement and launch a web application that meets the requirements given by the domain on which it is working. 
the academic and industrial community will be able to make use of model transformation chains that not only allow the export of a web application that fulfills the established acceptance criteria but will also be able to adjust the necessary components of the model for its maintenance at the pace of technological progress, which favors the development cycle according to the methodology used in the construction and the developer's productivity. The use of a model transformation chain allows for minimizing the construction time of applications that are under the same context, which allows focusing efforts on software analysis and design. To build models it is necessary to express them in some way. Modeling languages allow capturing the information or knowledge of a system or structure defined by a set of consistent rules. These rules are used to interpret the meaning of the components of said structure. Creating a domain-specific language is worthwhile when it allows a particular type of problem or solution to be expressed more clearly than other existing languages. The Eclipse Modeling Project focuses on the evolution and advancement of model-based technology development within the opportunities provided by Eclipse, providing a unified set of modeling frameworks, tools, and implementation standards. With the work done using the EMF framework and more specifically the metamodeling with eCore, it is possible to show the construction of our core of the final case study, which is the generation of web application source code through transformations. Although the developed components are the initial ones, they serve to introduce us to the world of the MDE in a practical way, to later apply the results of the research required for our general objective. Okay, many thanks to Lady. I think she's not connected, so we will not have questions for this talk. And we will proceed to the final one. So let us go. Okay. One second. So the final presentation is in charge of Jason Steve Arevalo Sandoval, whom I do not see here in the list of, oh yes, Jason, can you hear us? Okay, I think Jason is connected. He sent a video of his presentation. I, I would just like to find out if he will be available to answer questions at the end. I think Jason is connected but not present, so we will just proceed to <laughs> his video and hopes, hope that he joins us later to answer questions. So the presentation is titled Implementation of a domain meta model for the generation of UML documentation through model transformation chains. Hello, I am Jason Stiff, telematic engineer and student of Magister in Sciences of Information and Communications at the District University of Bogota, Colombia. 
Today I'm going to present the work called Implementation of a Domain Metamodel for the Generation of UML Documentation through Model Transformation Chains, which is the base part of my master's project. UML has become a language that allows modeling the components of a process for building software that provides a modeling language. The success of UML is its use in successful projects and the increase in the need for support tools and documentation for software. This paper proposes the theoretical bases that allow the generation of rules for the generation of a domain metamodel of UML diagrams. The rules are defined allowing a specification where ambiguities and the need to learn a specific programming language are avoided thanks to the use of a modeling framework. This is where model transformation chains are an alternative to propose a pattern that identifies an input model and convert it into an expected output model that generates value to the documentation in a software project. For the development of the proposed metamodel, the stages of research and review of documentation of the EMF tool, analysis, and implementation of the general components and construction of the project were carried out. The software lifecycle includes a series of phases, called, definition, analysis, design, implementation, deployment, testing, and maintenance. In the first four phases, sets of diagrams are created with levels of abstraction that decrease as the project progresses and gradually become the software code. This process is often referred to as refinement. Despite the differences in the levels of abstraction, the diagrams of the different phases must represent the same system, so that the concepts of the system domain that were identified in the definition phase must still be preserved in the implementation. This means that there must be consistency between the diagrams of the different phases of the project. Eclipse is one of the best open source development platforms and it is highly extensible through plugins. There are many projects around a large community of users and developers. The Eclipse workbench is made up of workspace, wizards, editors, views, and perspectives. Eclipse modeling framework, EMF, is the core of the Eclipse platform for model-driven development. For the generation of the specific domain metamodel of our case study, functionalities and EMF projects must be established to then build the eCore metamodel corresponding to the context that surrounds UML. In the context of software construction, the documentation of projects has become very important, so much so that it is currently considered part of the applications. This will involve the entire context of infrastructure, technology, methodology, framework, and architecture related to the represented system. The purpose of model-driven engineering, MDE, is to allow the representation of reality through models, which facilitates the implementation of information systems. So, it is possible to obtain different solutions not only for an application but also for the representation of the system, which in our case are UML diagrams. Diagrammatic representation allows the reuse of potential applications as part of a larger system. For example, if the construction of user authentication and registration system is required, the schematization of this requirement will be equally valid for a banking system, a healthcare system, or an academic system. The use of MDE and specifically model transformation chains differs from reverse engineering. Reverse engineering, also known as return engineering, works backward, part of the final result, divides the product, and performs analysis and measurements to recover the original design information. In the approach of this project with MDE, the start is made from zero and forward, for the generation of UML documentation as a starting point and design of the construction of a product. The model transformation chains are the result that was decided to obtain as a metamodel from a series of transformations, which, being sequential and using the output of the previous transformation as input, which will allow obtaining a final element that in the case raised is a UML documentation model. The figure is the simplest representation of a model transformation chain, where Metamodel Model Metamodel transformation Model transformation In the field of software construction, the documentation of projects has become very important, so much so that it is currently considered part of the applications. The generation of the documentation houses several features, from the methodology used for its implementation to the syntax, notation, and visualization with which it is represented. Additionally, the representation by means of diagrams allows the reuse of potential applications as part of a larger system. For example, if the construction of user authentication and registration system is required, the schematization of this requirement will be equally valid for a banking system, a healthcare system, or an academic system. The unified modeling language allows showing systems at all levels of abstraction, so that users, leaders, and programmers understand all the features of the application. The models allow to establish better communication with the user for several reasons. 
They show the client an approximation of what the final product will be. They provide a first approximation to the problem that allows visualizing how the result will look. Show systems at all levels of abstraction. Currently, the UML is potentially the basis for many tools, among which we have tools for visual modeling, tools for simulation, and tools for running development environments. UML and its close relationship with object-oriented programming allow the establishment of different methodologies for software development according to new technologies. Currently, there is talk of component-based development and research into its implementation, as a complement to current programming paradigms. If the use of components tends to increase, it would not imply that these techniques can totally replace the current and already established ones. The UML model. A model is a conceptual structure of all the topics related to a specific problem. The UML domain model. The domain model is created to represent the vocabulary and key concepts of the problem domain. In UML the static structure of the objects in a system is presented in the figure, where the base structure of the domain model for the UML context is illustrated. The graphic representation of the domain model for the specific domain worked on in the current project is presented in the figure representing the general components required for the generation of the domain metamodel worked on for the generation of UML documentation using transformation chains. The UML metamodel. A metamodel contains the analysis, construction, and development of applicable and useful schemes, rules, constraints, models, and theories for the modeling of predefined classes of problems. It is a global representation that defines how all models are represented. The metamodels contain the concrete specification of an application domain that follows the syntactic restrictions. Using the model-driven engineering alternative and through sequential transformations, it is possible to represent different problems raised and abstracted from reality. We can obtain a final product through a model transformation chain to represent the problems mentioned, which are basically the diagrams that make up the UML documentation. The generated representation is the basis for the construction of systems that will solve the problem initially established and modeled, regardless of the technology being worked on, regardless of whether it is defined and established or whether it is a new and experimental one. The purpose of model-driven engineering, MDE, is to allow the representation of reality through models, which facilitates the implementation of information systems. However, as already mentioned, despite being a fundamental part, the generation of the documentation of the code and components involved in its construction is not given importance, that is where the model transformation chains are an alternative to take. So, it is possible to obtain different solutions not only for an application but also the representation of the whole system, which in our case are UML diagrams. The mechanism that we decided to implement to carry out a series of sequential transformations is the model transformation chains, using as input, the output of a previous transformation, which will allow obtaining a final element that in the case raised in this project is a UML documentation model, as presented in the figure. The most important thing is that the result is an exact and understandable representation both for the user who requests the requirement and for the user developer engineer who performs software coding with the solution to the requirement. The figure is the representation with a conceptual map of the software development cycle, where different factors intervene during each of the stages. In this conceptual map, each of the elements that can intervene is reflected at a general level. Emphasis is placed on the highlighted part in red. They are the components related to the execution of the project for the generation of UML documentation through transformation chains of models. The Eclipse Modeling Framework is the framework provided by Eclipse for the creation of models and metamodels that facilities for automatic code generation and for the construction of model-based tools. EMF allows automatically generating Java classes that implement elements of our models, as well as adapter classes that allow modelers to view and edit a model. The main functionalities of EMF are Design eCore metamodels, with two types of editors. Editor based on a tree-like structure. Visual editor, like a UML class diagram. Build model editors based on a tree-like structure, EMF allows generating Java classes that support the metamodel and classes for testing with JUnit. The EMF core consists of the following elements. EMF allows defining metamodels based on eCore. In this framework, the models can be created and modified from an eCore metamodel. There is also supported to manage the persistence of models through XMI serialization and in addition to an API for reflection of objects. EMF Edit is a framework that allows generating Java classes to edit an EMF model and consists of classes that support editing properties, content providers, and editing property sheets. 
a command framework for building an EMF model that includes undo and redo operations. EMF CodeGen is a tool that allows the generation of a complete editor from an eCore metamodel. The implementation of the metamodel in EMF with eCore allows having the starting point of the general objective of the project, which is the realization of a model transformation chain to obtain UML diagrams of an application. The construction of the metamodel is done in the Eclipse Modeling Tool Development IDE. In the tool palette, we add to the diagram the classes required for the object domain model of this project, documentation with UML. The eCore file allows you to define the elements detailed below and is presented in the figure. E class, E reference, E attribute, E data type. Modeling the domain metamodel separately uproots elements of the logical and physical views of the specific modeling tool, as the design patterns are generalizable and completely independent of application modeling. Therefore, the same logical view can be used for different application models, or reciprocally, different logical architectures can be used for the same application model, which translates into saving efforts when modeling with EMF. The generation of UML documentation using MDE and applying model transformation chains allows us to have the first input as a starting point in the construction of an application. Additionally, it will work in parallel in the development stage to provide the diagrams that define the correct coding flow of the software required. However, there is the possibility of taking advantage of the power of MDE to implement a project that allows generating the code from the construction of models and metamodels from which a partial generation of source code can be obtained. Okay, I think this was the last presentation for this session. Um, just to confirm, Jason Arevalo, are you present? Okay, Jason appears to be connected to the chat, but he's not responding. I don't know, perhaps. Uh, we don't have him here. Um, therefore, we can't have a... Is he online? No. So we won't have uh, questions for these presentations either. And this was the last presentation. So this officially closes this session. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And I think... We will see, we will meet at six. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you to the audience connected on Zoom. Yeah, just to confirm, uh, at 6 p.m. here in the facilities of the university, we will have a cocktail party and a dance. Uh, so everyone is invited. Um, we will continue also tomorrow with the other sessions. Thank you very much.
para que se presente aquí dentro del auditorio. Eh, queríamos aprovechar esta primera sesión justamente para presentarles al elenco de la tuna universitaria de la Universidad Continental. Esta tuna está integrada por más de 15 estudiantes nuestros y bueno, ellos se eh, autodenominan la tuna novata porque justamente eh, a raíz de la pandemia estuvo desactivada y recientemente están volviendo a las a funciones habituales. ¿no? Entonces, eh, presento a ustedes a la tuna universitaria y eh, nos van a presentar una demostración de sus habilidades. Gracias, adelante. Muy buenas tardes tengan todos ustedes. Es un gusto y es un honor pues estar frente a tan distinguida concurrencia. Muchas gracias por esos aplausos que desbordan y pueden hacer caer este auditorio. Gracias. Pues es un honor estar frente a ustedes, como vuelvo a decirles. Bien, hoy venimos después de un viaje que, nos, que hemos hecho gracias a la Universidad Continental, pues hemos estado por otras tierras en las cuales hemos vivido nuevas experiencias, nuevos aprendizajes y pues en este viaje hemos aprendido un tema en particular, 
un tema que quizás para ustedes sea algo desconocido. Y espero que hoy en día sea de su agrado. Con ustedes, Moliendo Café. Hola. Pues bien, ustedes que siempre llega un momento difícil de la noche, pues a nosotros nos han dicho, toquen dos canciones, ya, y pueden irse, pero nosotros siempre queremos darles más. Una, un poco más de emoción, hola, hola. ¿no? Y pues, ahora venimos con un tema para la chica más guapa de la universidad, que son hola. las que están aquí presentes, definitivamente. Hola. Y pues, venimos a cantarles Sebastopol, y siguiendo el elenco de danza.
Aplausos, aplausos a la tuna de la Universidad Continental. Muchas gracias a la tuna. Bueno, también queríamos aprovechar la oportunidad para presentar al elenco de danzas de la Universidad Continental. Como saben, este tipo de actividades nos permite generar eh, experiencias a nuestros estudiantes para que puedan potenciar sus competencias transversales, que le llamamos. Ellos nos van a interpretar una conocida danza típica de la ciudad de Arequipa, la pampeña. La pampeña es una variante del guayno andino y tiene su historia porque justamente la zona de Arequipa se parece a una pampa y los que vivimos aquí, pues, podríamos decir que nos llaman pampeños también. Entonces, les presento a ustedes y recibamos con un fuerte aplauso al elenco de danzas de la Universidad Continental.
Muchas gracias al elenco de danzas de la Universidad Continental. Fuertes, fuertes aplausos, por favor, para despedirlos. Bien, con esta actividad estamos cerrando la sesión de hoy. Los invitamos para la sesión de mañana, de manera que ahora viene un pequeño eh, cóctel para todos. Gracias, buenas noches.